Next Radio 2018 with Broadcast Bionics. Next Radio. Thank you. Thank you for the warm welcome, and it is truly great to be here. Uh, as James mentioned, last year I travel a great deal. And you know when they tell you on the airplane to get up and walk around? They're actually not kidding. So I ended up sitting uh, in, uh, in California with a client, and he said, you don't look so good. And I was having a little trouble getting a deep breath, and I'd had this pain in my leg, and he went, you know, my grandmother had this, you're going to the casualty right now. And I went, no, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, everything's cool. And he said, I tell you what, let's call your doctor, and if your doctor says go to casualty, we're gonna go to the emergency room. And my doctor said, guess what? You gotta go get that checked out, and sure enough. So the moral of the story is when you get on an airplane, get up every 15 or 20 minutes, no matter what, and walk around. And uh, that's the, the wisdom of my last year of life. Um, thank you again for having me here. Uh, how many people in the room produce content? How many of you actually produce, your lives depend on getting, keeping, growing audiences, uh, whatever the platform. Okay, good. The work I do, and it was interesting because I'd actually uh, met Susan for the first time back when we were back in the green room, and she said, what do you do? And that's always such a tough question. What do you do? How do you explain to people? And the bottom line is, we're all in the story business. Whether you are on air, or whether you're producing podcasts, whether you do commercials, whether you do branded content, whether you're going on Facebook to get stories of people to figure out what songs are really tracking and resonating with human beings. It's all about storytelling, and it's all about listening and storytelling. So. The work that I do is just based on three things, and it never changes. People go, oh, what are you gonna talk about this time? Because you know, I've been around for a while. What are you gonna talk about this time? And I'm like, it's the same message, because it's what works. Tell the truth, make it matter, and never be boring, and that is the essence. Um, the model that I developed and have worked with for many years successfully, and if you do these things, it will work. It starts with focus. What is it you want to talk about? And there are three or four or five things that always 100% work, but there are no boring stories, only boring storytellers. Nothing in this life is boring. If the person who is presenting is interested, then it becomes interesting. So generally, if you can talk generally, what always works, people are interested in, is my world safe? Did they poison people in a restaurant in England? Are people gonna get sick from the same thing that those Russians died from? Or is it okay to go to a restaurant and have a meal? Is my world safe? Do you know people where there's a hurricane and a typhoon? Is my world safe? That's the first thing, health and safety. But after that comes emotion, and after that comes money and power, and after that comes how is my life better or different because of something I'm hearing on the radio or on this podcast right now. So when we do focus, engage, opinion, position, storytelling, focus is what is your topic? And if it fits into any of those umbrellas, it's gonna work really well, but it doesn't have to. Remember, the only rules, and again, three rules, tell the truth, make it matter, never be boring, there are no rules other than those three things. So everything else is just sorta of how you get there. Engage, what's in it for a listener? Nothing should go on air whether it's news or talk or information programming or a disc jockey announcing a song, going into a promo, nothing should go on the air unless you can answer in your first question, why should I listen to this? Or here's why you need to listen to this. And for a long time in training news people, both in radio and television, it becomes, well, we're journalists, why do we have to sell it? It's just the news, it's what's happening. Because if you can't engage in three seconds, they're gone. The audience has a very, very short attention span. 
And so it becomes, and one of the points that was made earlier, and I think it was brilliant with news, is that people can get news 24 seven from lots of other sources other than us. So then it becomes, if you're following the story of the typhoon, here's the latest. Just assuming the audience is already in on, and they're not hearing it for the first time ever. And if they are, you give them enough. But if they're not, if they're not, you're not boring. Never be boring. Opinion position, if you're doing news, I actually never wanna hear your opinion position, but if you haven't thought about something enough to have formed an opinion position, you don't care. And if you don't care, it's no longer truth. You're no longer being authentic. You're an actor playing the part of somebody presenting. Fake caring, it never works as well. Interested is interesting. If you can't unpeel it back like an onion and make find something in this story that you care about, you'll never communicate it the same way. So again, why do you care? How do you care? And how can you make a listener care? Is it relevant? How does it matter to you? And these are some of the tenets of powerful radio. Radio where listeners sit in the car and can't get out of the car. And it was interesting because I walked here to the Royal Institute this morning from the hotel and every single person I passed had headphones on. 100% had headphones on. 100% of the human beings on the streets of London were listening to something in their headphones. And if we're lucky, it's us, if we're lucky. Okay, storytelling. What happened? Why did it happen? Where did it happen? How did it happen? When did it happen? How come you're telling it on the radio? How does it affect people? Why should I listen? These things are really important in storytelling. If you're doing news, and if you're doing a public service announcement, the old ways have changed. And there's one little trick. If you can flip around, instead of starting with the who, start with the what. What happened, or what's in it for the audience? Instead of police say, prime minister says, Flip it around, or you know, a, a press release says, flip it around to what's in it for the audience, and it becomes very, very powerful. One of my favorites was a press release that started out with, according to uh, the press release, uh, the Picasso is only going to be at the Museum of Modern Art through Thursday. And if you flip it around, if you haven't seen the Picasso, you only have until Thursday, and that's according to a press release from the Museum of Modern Art. Flip it around, put the attribution at the bottom, it will work better. And I guarantee you, the radio news police are not gonna snatch you out of your bed in the night and arrest you because you attribute it at the bottom instead of the top. Never be boring. You have two seconds to get the audience's attention. Storytelling is what we do. That's our work. We create content through storytelling, and storytellers matter. Story spine is something I talk a lot about in the book. We use it, we teach it once upon a time, every day, until one day, and because of that, because of that, because of that, uh, until finally and ever since that day. When we teach storytelling, this is one of the models we let people try to play around with, and it helps. It's one of a million storytelling models but it's one that's good and it works. It comes from Ken Adams, uh, who developed it from uh, doing improv theater with children. Now, if you think some of the things I'm talking about today sound the same, they do, because you have heard it before, because this is what works. Tell the truth, make it matter, never be boring. People talk a lot about content. It's not just content, it's the storyteller. The storyteller matters. Claire was talking earlier about getting a guy to tell her about how he's gonna go smoke crack and maybe kill some pigeons. The storyteller matters. Listening, being the grown-up in the room directing the story, and letting people trust you because you have authentic interest in what they're talking about, this is huge and it's the core being authentically interested. One thing I would even take it a step further, you don't always have to have it on audio. If there's a great story, sometimes you can tell it better 
than somebody who's boring or goes on and on. So again, as broadcasters, as presenters, as professionals, don't ever be afraid to sometimes take that story and you don't always have to have actuality. You can tell it better. A good story is still a good story. But one of the reasons why I put up that t-shirt is that half the secret of creating powerful content is finding and developing the talent who will then create that content, bless you, who will then create that content for you. So again, this is a talent-based industry, and talent is rare. Anyone can learn craft, skill, and we can train anyone, and everyone can get better. But true talent, the motor inside, the curiosity, the hunger, the humor, the sparkle of the eye, the interest in being human, and the need to communicate, the being a storyteller, these things are unique and they're wonderful to each person. And find the best talent you can and nurture it and develop it. It is core, it is key. We are in a talent-based industry. So look for, develop, hire, and find talent. And if you are talent, develop and work hard to become better talent. Tell stories, seek stories, listen to stories. Everyone has a story. That seems to kind of be the theme of the day today, and it's really true. Everyone has a story. It's not always a good story. So again, are there characters we care about? Is there humor? Does it have an arc? Does it move forward? I'm working a lot these days with podcasting. It's very, very exciting, because suddenly we have new canvas with no rules, except inform and entertain, inspire, persuade, and connect. That's it. So we can do scripted, we can do interviews, we can do live, we can make them three minutes, nine minutes, 10 hours. Some of the most successful podcasts right now in America are coming from the New York Times. They decided to do a podcast called The Daily. It's cleaning public radio's clock. So what did we decide to do on public radio? We're carrying the show as a radio show. KCRW in Santa Monica, one of the clients I work with, actually is taking the daily. Is it great radio? I don't know. Does the guy have the best voice in the world? Not particularly. Is the content a unique journey that you can't get elsewhere unless you listen to that podcast? Yes. Are you giving me a journey I can't get elsewhere? Am I going to get talkable topic? Am I going to understand my world better? Is it going to connect me to life? Will I feel less alone? If I'm bored, will I be less bored? So again, everyone has a story. Seek stories. Everyone in this room is in the story business. Once upon a time, that comes from Story Spine. If you watch kids and you read them a story and you say, once upon a time in a far off land, there was a princess and a monster, and then one day, and the kid leans in, that's your audience and you've captivated your audience. Can you do that with each listener that's listening to you now, each individual human being? This is a picture of an onion. I know, it's so basic, right? But peel it down, every story, get to the heart, find the thing that's gonna make you cry. Peel down every story, find the humanity, find the truth. Sheryl Sandberg from Facebook says, done is better than perfect. And I have that on my refrigerator. Because done is mostly better than perfect. Unless you're podcasting. <laughs> and then perfect is better than done. Because that's going to live forever. And now you can make it perfect. Okay, so when you podcast, and this was one of the things Susie was talking about, it, it costs money, and it takes time, and it means hiring amazing and great people to do this, and then it means leaving them alone. I loved when Susie said, and then step away and don't tell them how to do their job, because if you give a sponsor a podcast, they're going to want to tell you the address and the hours they're open, right? Because they think that's interesting. But what's really interesting is the story. It's the story. So again, hire people, let them run. Don't micromanage. Never take the paintbrush out of the hand of the artist. If you hire an artist, let them paint, okay? 
This is not an empty chair. This is your listener. Pull up an empty chair to your desk or your console. Put the word you on it and always talk to that person. Talk to one. Podcasting and broadcasting are vital to always talk to one person. You're literally in their head. And somebody mentioned Terry Wogan earlier. I'll never forget my favorite piece of research I have ever seen in my life, and it was on Terry Wogan. A listener in England said, we plan our holidays for when Terry goes on vacation because I don't want to be in England when Terry's not on the radio. And I thought, okay, that's the Mount Everest of research. I want every show I work with to get response like that because every person felt they knew Terry Wogan. They felt like they could go have a cup of tea or a beer with that man. And that's the essence of personality radio and personality podcasting and being a storyteller. I was listening this morning to uh, LBC. Steve Austin's another storyteller, complete generator. He had me, I was in my towel and he had me cracking up and he just said something really interesting. Huh, you can eat your Christmas tree. What? <laughs> Turns out there's a chef at the Ritz who is putting out a cookbook about things you can do with the Christmas tree to eat it, you know, using the needles in soup or something, I don't know, but he had me. Storytelling, humor, humanity, outrage, anything you feel personally will work universally. The personal is universal, it's the private that's boring. The me, 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 I, 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 that's boring. But the minute you turn it around and you make it you, have you ever, can you imagine, if you were standing here looking at, here's what you'd see. When I first started working with the BBC a long time ago, there was a young reporter, and she was up in, I forget, Manchester, Leeds, and she did a story the next day after a workshop. As you walk along Maplethorpe Drive, and you look to the left, you see the washing hanging on the lines, you see roses and picket fences. You'd never know that at 1812, there were terrorists planning to blow up a train. Six people were arrested. You know, putting the listener in the movie, putting the audience in the experience as you walk along, it's not just giving them a set of facts now, it's engaging and involving the audience. We have John Ryan in the room and he had a whole group of people who all worked that way. Very exciting. When you put the listener in your story, they get involved. There's a Chinese proverb, tell me I may forget, show me I may remember, but involve me and I'll understand. If you can involve every person listening to your amazing output, they will be with you forever and you will get and keep and grow audiences. When you work with people and you appreciate what they do, someone who feels appreciated will do more than is ever expected. And I think as managers, as finders and developers of story and talent, to acknowledge people and be grateful that they show up and do a good job. At this point, I am grateful for every day of life I get because I came close. I'm so happy when I wake up in the morning and I can't wait to face a new day. And I think when you appreciate people, you will be thrilled. They will exceed your expectations. When you don't appreciate people and you pick at them and you're angry with them and you expect less, they will deliver less. This is a list of the powerful communicator principles. If you go to Beyond Powerful Radio or Geller Media, you can find them, or I have a big stack of them that I brought today, and I'm happy to give one to you. Basically, at the top, tell the truth, make it matter, never be boring. And again, that's the essence. If, if you just take away three things, you'll be fine. You know, because that, that's the whole message. But speaking visually in terms a listener can picture using the imagination medium, start with your best stuff. 
more important than ever in this world of com competitive uh, audio product and content and also short attention span. Storytell powerfully, don't let it go too long, listen. And I mean, I can't wait to really talk to Catherine later because I already know she's like an amazing listener. I could just feel it, you know? And it's so exciting when you talk to people who listen with their whole being. They don't just hear the words, they hear what people are saying. Wow, that's a real skill and it's a gift. Why would someone want to hear this? Your first sentence always should answer that. Talk to one listener at a time, do engaging transitions, promote effectively and authentically, Allow the humor, humor is the gold in life and in radio. If you forget you're doing radio or podcasting or audio and think about you're doing life with a microphone, you're holding up a mirror, reflecting the life we're in, humor will get you through anything. You know, in singles, uh, on, on all of the, you know, Tinder and all of Match.com and all the single sites, they always say, women find the number one most appealing trait in a man to be humor. Because life is hard, and if somebody can make you laugh, they might be a pretty good person to go through life with. Be who you are and take risks. And finally, dare to be great. It's easy to be average, but you have to take risk to be great. Your audience wants to matter, they want to feel needed, they want to make a difference. This is the book, and that's how you can find me. And I'd like to say thank you to Matt and to James for putting on this amazing conference year after year, which gets better and better, and for allowing me the privilege and honor of being a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Come on out. That was great. Thanks very much. Um, talked about podcasting there, podcasting versus radio. Obviously, the, at the top, it's, it's the same. Well, uh, yes and no. I mean, you can actually make movies in podcasts. Mm. You can get the bad guy over 17 hours of programming in a podcast. You have a niche audience, or here in Britain, niche audience. You have an audience that really wants to know. You, you don't have to just broadcast it. You can narrow cast mm. with a podcast. So, and it's global, which is also very exciting. So, for example, if you have an overweight aging cat, uh, you can do a podcast on your overweight aging cat, and you'll get a global audience. You may have 10 people per country who have fat cats who want to know what to do, but because you have very specific special interest with a podcast, you can do that, and the canvas is... It's just fantastic. You know, I've never been more excited about working in audio than I am right uh, now. So a question from Lizzie to sort of put you on the spot. Um, who do you think is the greatest storyteller at the moment? Oh, gosh. You know, I, and it's like, which of your kids do you like better? <laughs> um, you know, it, it's really hard to say. Uh, I heard Richard Glover at 702 in Australia uh, telling an absolutely phenomenal story. Uh, and it's just, it was like buying milk, you know, going to the store and buying milk. Storytellers are rare. But and they are gold and they are gifted. So today, today, September 17th, um, from what I heard last week, I'd say Richard, but I work with lots and lots of people. I think uh, James O'Brien from LBC is a really good storyteller. Nick Ferrari is a great storyteller. Uh, Steve Austin's LBC has Vanessa Feltz, uh, Eddie Mayer. I mean, you guys are, this is a very rich storytelling. I mean, Matt, you're, you're not exactly shabby <laughs> at storytelling either. I think sometimes working with kids yeah. is even harder than working with grown-ups because grown-ups have been trained to be polite. You guys can stare, even if you're bored out of your mind, you know, you can just stare and look like you're listening. But a five-year-old or a four-year-old, forget it. You know, it's very clear when you've lost your audience when they're little kids. And so, Matt, I mean, you've developed and become an amazing storyteller. Oh, enough of me. Valerie Geller, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>